Hi guys, welcome to uh, my second video on the hormones and the regulation of the blood glucose concentration. So in our uh, first video, we were looking at the um, at the role of the liver and pancreas in the uh, control of the blood glucose concentration. And we also discussed the role of the adrenaline and the second messenger. So in this video, we are going to focus on insulin and glucagon. So remember, okay, the pancreas uh, has two specific cells, beta and alpha cells. Alpha, alpha cells uh, secrete hormone called glucagon and beta cells secrete hormone called insulin. So those hormones secreted by pancreas will be secreted straight into the bloodstream when they're going to travel to the target cell. And the target cell, it's a liver. Liver has a specific uh, receptors on, on its cell, which will be complementary to the hormone. So in terms of the insulin, it's obviously it's a hormone, so it's a globular protein, and insulin uh, has uh, and, and insulin is secreted by B cells of the pancreas. So what I've just mentioned a second ago, insulin molecule binds with the receptor sites on the surface membrane of the liver cells and brings uh, specific actions in place. So obviously once it binds, it's going to change the tertiary structure of the glucose transport carrier protein and the change shape and open, so not glucose, can get into the cells by facilitated diffusion. Or they can easily increase the number of glucose carrier proteins as well. Hence, more uh, glucose can enter the cells. So, how does it work? So, when the optimum blood glucose uh, will be above 5 minimals per decimeter cubed, the, uh, uh, the beta cells of pancreas are going to detect this change. Uh, the response of the beta cells of pa pancreas will be to secrete hormone called insulin. And once the insulin uh, is secreted, there will be different processes taking place in the body to bring uh, the uh, level of the glucose back to normal. So the processes could be, for example, increase in the cellular respiration because obviously glucose is needed for respiration. It could be the conversion of glucose to glycogen for storage. It could be conversion of glucose to fat or also could be the absorption of glucose into the cells by co-transport. So all of those four processes will decrease the level of the glucose in the blood plasma, hence bring it back to the optimum level. So once the concentration of blood glucose will fall, the negative feedback will be sent so the, uh, so the cells of the pancreas, B cells, no longer are going to detect any change. Hence the production of the insulin, secretion of the insulin is going to stop. So the ways to lower the blood glucose concentrations are the ones that we've mentioned a few seconds ago and the overall effect is to lower the blood glucose concentration bringing it back uh, to the optimum hence the negative feedback will take place remember 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 what we say the negative feedback here it's the fact that the secretion of the insulin hormone results in the reduction of its own secretion so hence we've got the cross here negative feedback so no more uh, insulin will be secreted because they don't need to lower the blood glucose concentration anymore. So, few questions to check if you got uh, all the key aspects uh, about the insulin. So, the state it's you need to put a tick in the box next to the statement which describes incorrectly so which of those it's false the actions of the insulin. So, insulin. Uh, activates enzymes involved in the conversion of glucose to glycogen. Correct, we've seen that this is one of the processes to lower the blood glucose concentration. Uh, so uh, I put C here for correct, it's not a tick, okay? Controls the uptake of glucose by regulating the inclusion of ch uh, channel proteins in a surface uh, membrane of target cells. Yes, correct, because we can 
increase the number of the channel proteins uh, on the surface membrane of target cells. Hence, more glucose can be absorbed from the blood plasma to the target cells. Attaches to receptors on the cell uh, on the surface of target cells. Yes, that's that's what the hormones are doing. So that's correct. And finally, activate enzymes involved in the conversion of glycerol to glucose. That's incorrect. So here we will be putting our tick. They ask for a tick because if you convert gla uh, uh, glycerol to uh, uh, to glucose, you're going to increase the concentration of glucose which we don't want to do it because our job is to decrease it using insulin okay so this is the correct answer another question here we've got when the insulin binds to receptors on liver cells on the target cells it leads to the formation of glycogen from glucose so this lowers the concentration of glucose in liver cells and explain how the formation of glycogen in the liver cells leads to lowering a blood glucose concentration. So glucose, okay, concentration in the liver cells will fall below that in blood plasma uh, and glucose will enter the cells. So leaves the blood by facilitated diffusion through carrier or channel proteins, okay? Then we've got glucagon. Glucagon is produced by alpha cells of pancreas. So still it's going to attach to the specific protein receptors of the cell surface membrane of the liver cells, but that will activate enzymes that convert glycogen to glucose and also could involve the process of uh, gluconeogenesis. So conversion of all the substrates like amino acids or glycerol into glucose. So all of those processes that we're talking about here are going to increase the level of the glucose. And of course, the negative feedback, same as before, will be taking place. So optimum level now it's going to fall. OK, once it's going to fall, it's going to be detected by alpha cells of the pancreas, which secrete the hormone glucagon. Glucagon is going to uh, bring about the processes to increase now the blood glucose concentration. Uh, to bring it back to the optimum. So it could be conversion of glycogen to glucose or could be uh, 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 gluconeogenesis, for example, conversion of amino acids to glucose. Okay, And we also could have the uncontrolled uh, quantity of glucose which will enter from intestines. That could be one of the processes as well. So all of those processes, in fact, are going to increase the blood glucose concentration, hence bring it back to the optimum at some point. Once we are back at the optimum, negative feedback will occur, which will reduce the secretion of the glucagon because the stimulus that fall in the concentration, it's not going to be longer here. So the questions, you've got the diagram that shows the events that which maintain the blood glucose concentration. We need to name the hormone A. How to do it? Uh, we need to look what happens to the glucose. So false. If false, it has to be glucagon. Name the organ B when the glycogen is stored and it's broken down. So where the process is taking place, that's the liver. And explain why this event shows the negative feedback, because it will reduce the secretion of the hormones. OK, so glucagon. OK, it's the hormone liver, uh, the target cells of the liver, the organ, it's a liver. A change is back to the normal, so it reduces the effect and the effect was the secretion of hormone A. So uh, here we've got a diabetic person. And we need to explain how the glucagon would affect the person's blood glucose concentration. So in other words, what does it do? So, glyco, uh, so glycogen could be converted to the glucose. So the process is called glycogenolysis by activated enzymes. And we also could be talking about gluconeogenesis. So the production of the glucose okay from other sources like glycerol or amino acids those two processes are going to increase the blood, uh, concentration of the glucose in the blood so to finalize this topic we've got the glucagon and insulin so we've got a diagram